If you remember a few days after India's lunar mission Chandrayaan-3 was launched that is on 17 July there was a news floating on the internet regarding a mystery object found on an Australian beach here is the picture it looks like a cylindrical object let me also tell you that this object did not directly drop on the beach it washed up on a beach and the name of the beach is green head located in western australia let me also describe this object It is a large copper colored cylinder that is about 2.5 meters long and 2.5 meters wide. It is covered in barnacles and appears to be damaged. Barnacles are basically sea organisms that fall in the category of crabs, shrimps and lobsters. So anyhow, the object was first spotted by a group of locals who were walking on the beach. They then reported the police, they sealed the area and began the investigation. The Australian Space Agency even shared this information on Twitter on day 1. They even said this object could be a space debris. Although they did not take any direct name, they simply said this object could be from a foreign space launch vehicle. And then as this news went viral, it captured the imagination of people around the world. There have been numerous theories. People started calling it a piece of alien technology, a brass metal from an old ship. Some even said it is part of the missing Malaysian flight MH370. And then some even said it was a time capsule, etc., etc. as many faces that many words and soon immediately some people even started relating it to a discarded fuel tank from the indian rocket that was launched on july 14th chandrayaan 3 i mean why not one can easily speculate that because this object was discovered just 3 days after a significant spacecraft launch making it possible that it could be debris from an indian spacecraft as you know nowadays people discuss such things and on twitter you can tag anyone you want so by doing the same this information reached the indian space research organization isro the chief of isro s somnath issued a statement saying that they cannot confirm or deny whether this object belongs to the indian rocket yesterday that is on july 31st the australian space agency concluded the investigation into this mystery object and they said this debris is most likely a part of the polar satellite launch vehicle pslv and then as you know pslv is a medium lift or light lift launch vehicle operated as well as manufactured only by the indian space research organization that means it is now confirmed that this mystery object is part of a polar satellite launch vehicle and is owned by the indian space agency now another important thing that i want to share with you is that always remember this point Whenever India launches any satellite into space the trajectory of the rocket often flies over Australia this is because the Indian Space Research Organisation launches their rockets from the Satish Dhawan Space Centre in Sri Harikota which is located in the southern indian state of Andhra Pradesh the launch path of the rocket totally depends on which orbit you want to send your satellite into because the rocket needs to have enough speed and the correct angle of inclination to achieve the desired orbit Now if you want your satellites to orbit the earth the launch trajectory will typically take the rocket over the equator Australia is located near the equator so it is often in the path of indian rocket launches in fact the chandrayaan 3 mission which was launched by india on july 14 2023 even that passed over australia as it is heading towards the moon the rocket's trajectory went over the northern territory queensland and new south wales I have made a video on Chandrayaan-3 lunar mission. In that I have explained everything in detail from beginning to end how the spacecraft will reach the moon's surface. So if you're interested in knowing about it, I'll put the link to that video in the top right corner. Please watch it. Now typically when a country launches a satellite, they are well aware of the trajectory and they coordinate with the relevant country's space agency to ensure the rocket's designated flight path is safe. Rockets are usually launched at high altitudes. Therefore they pose minimal or zero risk to people and property on the ground. However, despite the low risk, there is always a concern regarding potential damage to public or private property and the safety of people. To address this concern, both the country's space agencies collaborate and coordinate on every launch. Now, coming back to this mystery object. After confirmation, it is said to be part of a PSLV rocket. But then if you see Chandrayaan-3 spacecraft was launched on a geosynchronous satellite launch vehicle GSLV Mark 3 rocket. Both PSLV and GSLV are two of the most important launch vehicles developed by ISRO. Both rockets are used to launch satellites into orbit, but they have different capabilities. The primary difference is that a PSLV is a four-stage rocket 
whereas the GSLV is a three-stage rocket. GSLV has a higher payload capacity, which means it is a heavy lift launch vehicle and it can launch satellites into geosynchronous orbit. Whereas the PSLV is a medium or light lift launch vehicle, but then it is a more mature rocket than the GSLV and it has a higher success rate. And the Chandrayaan-3 spacecraft was launched on GSLV Mark III rocket, which is a newly developed rocket by the ISRO. But then the Australian Space Agency has confirmed that this mystery object is part of a PSLV rocket and more specifically it is part of the third phase of the PSLV rocket. Now the question is when did India launch a PSLV rocket in recent times? The most recent PSLV launch by India was on July 30, 2023, that is two days back. The PSLV C-56 mission launched seven satellites into orbit, including the DSSAR satellite, a synthetic aperture radar satellite developed by Singapore's Defence Science and Technology Agency. The other six satellites were commercial satellites from the United States, Canada and the United Kingdom. So clearly this mysterious object cannot be part of the PSLV that was launched on July 30. Here is the list of all the PSLV launches from ISRO's official website. Most likely this mysterious object is part of the PSLV rocket that was launched on either April 22, 2023 or last year November 26, 2022. And always remember the first stage, second stage and the third stage of a PSLV rocket falls back to Earth more specifically in the Indian Ocean, at about 130 seconds, 370 seconds and 700 seconds after launch respectively. Many times if the debris is in a relatively good condition and can be recovered safely, it is retrieved and reused. However, if it is not in a suitable state for recovery, the debris is intentionally destroyed by allowing it to be left into the ocean. In this case, the Australian government has managed to recover this large metal object. Now the key issue is whether the Australian Space Agency will hand it back to India or if India will make a request for its return. So this is where you have to understand that there is something called the United Nations Space Treaties. Under this there are five treaties. Number one, the Outer Space Treaty of 1967. Number two, the Rescue Agreement of 1968. Number three, the Liability Convention of 1972. Number four, the Registration Convention of 1976. And number 5, the Moon Agreement of 1979. If you look at the Rescue Agreement of 1968, under this treaty there are provisions for the assistance and return of astronauts and space objects. Similarly, under the Liability Convention of 1972, there are provisions laid out that talks about the liability of states for damage caused by their space objects. So if you see it is similar to how we register our vehicles in the RTO. Even spacecraft and rockets also need to be registered as per the United Nations Space Treaties. This means that both the countries, Australia and India, will have to handle the situation as per the United Nations Five Treaties on Space. They will follow the provisions like the Rescue Agreement of 1968 and the Liability Convention of 1972 to determine the appropriate course of action. After that, both nations will decide whether to retrieve the object or leave it where it is. So this is what's going to happen. I hope you found this video informative. Thank you for watching it.